New Mexico has what our professor Lana Atkinson refers to as, quote, the trifecta. That is, the same party has majorities, strong ones in both legislative chambers and the governor's office. Democrats like that for a number of reasons. We'll focus on two of them. First, the legislative agenda. Second, redistricting. Let's start with the agenda. Progressives who unseated more conservative Democrats in the primaries didn't win every general election race, notably John Arthur Smith's old seat and Clemente Sanchez's old seat will be Republican, but progressives hung on to four seats held by moderate Democrats and Democrats unseated Republicans, Candace Gould and Sandra Rue. What's more, they picked up Bill Payne's old seat. That's interesting. The Senate has not looked favorably upon recreational cannabis bills on increasing permanent fund payouts to benefit early childhood education or on repealing unenforceable law that criminalizes abortion, as Marcia, Martha mentioned a little bit ago. And Martha, sticking with you, do you see a significant change in the chances for those issues? Well, the I would of hope the... so, mm -hmm. uh, Gene, particularly the 1969 law. As I uh, mentioned earlier, we are in some danger of having Roe v. Wade overturned in the next few years mm -hmm. because of the recent Supreme Court change with Judge Barrett being elevated uh, to the court because she is against Roe as now a whole majority of the, of the court is. Our law will automatically kick in and it essentially outlaws abortion uh, if Roe is overturned. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a big factor. I was surprised because John Arthur Smith got lost his seat over his defection. He had promised advocates and others that he would vote to overturn that law, and then he didn't do it, but he wasn't the only one. I believe there were six or seven others, but he got punished. He lost in the primary. However, mm -hmm. the pro-choice side lost in the general. Ty ab abortion, uh, the right, the New Mexico right to life has endorsed her. Mm -hmm. uh, so that vote is going to go against advocates for reproductive rights should it come up again, that particular mm. vote. Now, the other seat, the progressive did win, Mary Kay Papin's seat, so mm -hmm. that uh, that did turn over. But I think that uh, the progressives are going to be under a lot of pressure depending on what makes it to the Supreme Court and when. Gotcha. Hey, Merritt, interesting. I want to pick up on something Martha just said there. Is there now... Uh, additional pressure on more conservative Democrats out there like Pete Campos or Joseph Cervantes to fall in line now that they're sort of without a backup in a, in a sense. Um, I think that really depends on the chamber major uh, majority leaders and what they decide to do and okay. how much power they decide to flex mm -hmm. and what happens in, um, in caucus meetings and in, in private meetings. Um, certainly, uh, power like that's been flexed before and longstanding, uh, as we just uh, saw uh, this year, where longstanding city members have primary opponents and find themselves on the way out. And uh, particularly if um, uh, either of those gentlemen are considered to be a, a threat or a rival, uh, uh, they may certainly see some pressure. You know, I, I would like to comment, I, I found fascinating, of course, I'm always interested in uh, House Districts 38 and 39, because that's my hometown, Silver City, and Grant County is red. I don't know if you saw that, but Rudy uh, Martinez lost his seat to Luis Terrazas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that was, uh, that's huge. I don't, that, that uh, was uh, fascinating for me to see. Um, and I think I want to call out uh, Representative Rebecca Dow, who just won her third term in House District 38, which has the other parts of Grant County and um, like in Sierra County. Uh, she has been a real uh, force. Uh, she and Louise uh, campaigned together. She works on both sides of the aisle. Uh, she works. Uh, she goes to meetings. Uh, uh, incessantly. She is a full-time, although unpaid, uh, legislator. And the other thing I want to note is a group she's active with, founded by Representative Kelly Fajardo, also re-elected uh, this year, called RISE, which is nonpartisan, focused on electing pro-business uh, women and grooming candidates. Mm -hmm. Crystal Diamond Runyon, who is our Arthur Smith seat, is a graduate of that program. So when we talk about electing women uh, to the legislature, there is um, an ongoing effort 
a nonprofit academy uh, that exists uh, for just that aim and in a very high profile race that got attention throughout the campaign for its tremendous fundraising, we've seen um, the first success of that. So mm-hmm. I found I found that fascinating. And um, the Lieutenant Governor's old Senate seat, um, also in Grant County, came very close to turning red uh, by just um, a couple uh, a couple hundred votes, I think. Right. So I, I just want to remind everyone, Grant County is where Salt of the Earth was filmed. Very, <laughs> it's a great movie. That's right. Uh, county and i think that points um to the ongoing rural urban divide we've been talking about it for years right let me pick up with lana on that very point there you know lana i'm curious your your take on this sort of a theme here how blue really is the metro area uh but democrats have eroded republican support on the west side and now in the heights we've got an overwhelming democrat heavy uh, contingent from the Albuquerque metro area now in our legislature. How, it, what, what's happening here? Is there some shifts going on here that we need to know about? Yeah, it doesn't look like, you know, in the end, maybe the shifts aren't so great in terms of numbers, but they are in terms of region. Okay. And, you know, we are really seeing and continuing to see this, this <coughs> urban rural split in New Mexico, uh, you know, expand. And absolutely Albuquerque metropolitan area it, is a deep blue. But if we combine sort of, you know, Las Cruces, Santa Fe and Albuquerque, that's about half the state. Mm-hmm. And then you get about half of the other voters in the rural areas of the state. So it, it really, you know, creates an opportunity for competition statewide. And, you know, there are a lot of conservative Hispanics. And I know that the uh, Republican Party has certainly tried to make uh, inroads into those groups. Identity is a hard thing to turn around, but there are certainly issues uh, between conservatives and liberals, that there are wedges there that are opportunities um, uh, for the party to make advances in rural areas. We are certainly seeing that in terms of votes mm-hmm. and um, you know, seeing what that looks like on the lay of the land ultimately is gonna be interesting, but we are definitely seeing what's going on nationally. This urban uh, rural split uh, is expanding and is gonna be a dominant feature of our politics for the future. Mm, no doubt, Martha. Republicans did pick up at least three seats in rural parts of our state in southern and central New Mexico. And interesting, they ousted uh, Democratic incumbents in two cases, defeating progressive Democrats who had defeated more moderate incumbents in the June primary. Uh, So there's a lot of moving pieces going on here. Are Democrats just in 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 a period where they just have to find their way just a little bit? It's not as if they're sliding, but just something's not quite cohesive, it seems like, from these results. Well, I think that sometimes there's a little bit of overhyping about how uh, liberal the electorate is becoming. As Lana just pointed out, there are a lot of Hispanics that are conservative. Mm -hmm. Uh, On other issues, uh, they're going to favor Democrats on many issues, but not the most progressive Democrats in in some cases. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a matter of reading the tea leaves, Gene, and finding that sort of golden mean, because I think that obviously we have seen that the the less progressive Democrats can prevail in those districts, but you move them over just a little bit and they're going to get beat. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a matter of demographics, I think, as well as tradition in those areas. And our demographics are changing all over the state. Mm -hmm. So Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We just need to pay attention to what the larger shifts are and how that's going to drift down or shift down to the political scene. Gotcha. Let me bounce back to Lana real quick here. It's a good time to bring up redistricting. Um, now that we start to see in, you know, how and why it's important, could you kind of take us through the process real quick for folks who may not kind of get what's, what's at stake here? And then we'll talk about uh, the, the, the people at play to make this happen. Right after right every ten years after a census, we have to redistrict every uh, every legislative and executive body world well, legislative body I should say in the state. So that was city council, legislature. So of course at the state level, that's for the the legislature and the senate, and that is a monstrous task. And in the past two times, there has not been a tri- trifecta. There's been a Republican governor in the last two redistrictings, but now we have 
all three parties in the same place. And the Supreme Court has said that party gerrymandering is okay. Mm -hmm. So I am expecting, uh, you know, definitely historically, uh, redistricting has been about sort of saving incumbent seats. But I think that this time there's going to be a lot of pressure and interest by, uh, you know, the party in power to uh, create a stronger uh, democratic state. Mm -hmm. uh, is it can they redraw congressional districts as well? Do I have that right? Yeah. Yes. So, okay. you know, the, yes. And they're going to have to, in fact, the more people have moved out of the second CD than any other DC if, CD. If you look at the numbers, their, you know, vote totals are much lower than the other congressional districts. Okay. And so we're going to have to add, you know, add areas, add demographic add regions to that. And so how you add those regions is going to affect the outcomes in those races. Interesting. Uh, Merritt, we're gonna, a little touched on time here for Republicans. What does this all mean? Well, um, I am currently on um, the redistricting commission that's looking at different options. And so it's been fascinating. And there is, we're, we're looking at different ways um, to create redistricting maps. Um, there, and there are several members of the legislature who are also on this um, uh, independent uh, commission. Uh, I, and I, I think there is a lot at stake uh, for Republicans and uh, just just getting anywhere close to parity, getting close to um, you know uh, f physical uh, geographic uh, uh, contiguity, uh, 50, anything close to 50-50 uh, 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 voter registration, maintaining communities of maintaining communities of interest, all of this is at stake. Um, of course, everyone on the commission, Republican or Democrat, say, "Oh, we don't want gerrymandering," but and we and we have two retired Supreme Court justices on the commission as well. But I think. Everybody knows, and especially if you saw the heated, heated races uh, for Supreme Court and, and appellate uh, court justices, I think everyone knows in 2021, there are gonna be a lot of lawsuits. That's an interesting mm -hmm. point there. We'll talk about one at that time. Martha Burke for Democrats redistricting. It's, there's some obvious answers here, but intra-party fighting, you know, all that kind of stuff. How, is there a plan, not that you would be privy to this, but should Democrats have a plan going in for this go for broke, try to, you know, just really get as much as they can while they can. <clears throat> well, Gene, I think in any kind of negotiations, uh, that is probably the mindset that the negotiators start with. Right. Because mm -hmm. if you don't start there, you're going to end up behind the eight ball. You, you got to start with more than you think you can get. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that is a bad strategy. Just go for it, see what happens. I'm sure the Republicans are thinking the same way, uh, but somewhere there's got to be some accommodation on both sides, I would imagine. And uh, maybe that's how you get there. Do you get there quicker by starting out playing hardball or not? Uh, I think most people would say, go, as you said, go for as much as you can get and then see what happens. There you go. We'll have to wrap that there. We're talking national trends in New Mexico's place in that picture when this group returns.